Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the uh, second uh, set of uh, videos here uh, related to muscle introduction. So uh, earlier we talked about muscles and how skeletal muscles can move bone. Well, if skeletal muscles are going to move bone, they'll attach in two different locations. Uh, what will happen is it'll attach in one location, typically span a joint, and then the muscle will attach in a second location. So then when the muscle contracts, that joint changes shape and the bones move. So uh, we have ways of referencing those two attachment points of the muscle. The attachment point that moves less is referred to as the origin, and the attachment point that moves more is referred to as the insertion. So a classic example is your biceps brachii. Yeah, it's biceps in your uh, arm. The biceps attach at the coracoid process in your shoulder, and they also attach at the radial tuberosity uh, in your forearm. So when the biceps contract, uh, the attachment point in your forearm moves more and the attachment point in your shoulder moves less. So the origin, again, is the attachment point of muscle that moves less and the insertion is the other attachment point for the muscle that moves more. So we say the insertion moves toward the origin when the muscle contracts. But the idea is you have the muscle attached at two different points and span a joint so when the muscle contracts, the joint moves and one bone is brought toward another. Uh, let's see. We've looked at some muscle movements before. Uh, I'd like to just reiterate some of these. Flexion is decreasing the angle of a joint. Extension is increasing the angle of a joint. Uh, you can also flex and extend the spine. If you flex the spine, you're bending forward, uh, whether it's in the neck or in the lumbar region. And if you extend the spine, you're pulling back, whether it's in, again, the cervical region or in the lumbar region. Uh, ab means away from, so with abduction, you're going away from the midline of the body, and adduction, you're going toward the midline of the body. Uh, rotation can occur on pivot joints like in your elbow uh, or in that uh, axis, your second cervical vertebra. Uh, let's see, circumduction ha happens at ball and socket joints um, where you can have that small circle at the proximal end and larger circle at the distal end. Um, and then we talked about the movements of the foot, the plantar flexion where you plant your toes, dorsiflexion where you pull your toes back, inversion and eversion. So uh, again, depending on the shape of the joint and depending on how the muscles attach, uh, it causes different mo movements of the body. So like your deltoid muscle sits as a cap on your shoulder and it inserts into a deltoid tuberosity in the humerus. So because it's at the lateral aspect on the side, when the deltoid contracts, it abducts the arm. Uh, let's see, here are a couple other uh, movements. These are special movements in the upper extremity. Opposition is what our thumbs can do. So your thumb can go and come around and oppose your other fingers. It can face your other fingers. So opposition allows us to have a uh, grip. Uh, because of the um, pivot joint in your shoulder, uh, our, our hands can be either supine or prone. So supination is palms up. Think of like holding a cup of soup. And pronation is palms down. If it's prone, then it's sort of exposed. So you get smacked in the back of your hand. So supination is palms up. The radius and ulna are parallel. And pronation is palms down. That's when the radius crosses over the ulna. All right. Uh, now, because muscles interact in these different ways, they're sort of categorized by the action that they perform. So if a muscle is a prime mover, that means it generates most of the force for a particular movement. So the biceps brachii, again, that's the muscle in the front of your uh, arm. It's the prime mover for elbow flexion. So when it contracts, it does most of the work to flex the elbow. Now, an antagonist opposes the prime mover. So just like uh, in a, a story, the antagonist oppo uh, opposes the protagonist, the antagonist is set up on the opposite side of the joint to perform the opposite motion. So if the uh, biceps brachii is the prime mover for elbow flexion, the triceps on the back of the arm is the antagonist. It extends the elbow. So uh, prime movers generate most of the force for a particular motion, and antagonists oppose that. And it makes sense to have muscles set up that way so that we can flex and extend. You can generate force in all directions. Otherwise, you just be able to flex your arms and then you just have to let, let them fall down due to gravity. So it's helpful to have antagonists to be able to perform the opposite action. 
Uh, now, helping out uh, the prime movers are synergists. Synergists help work with the prime movers. So, like we said, the biceps brachii in your arm is the prime mover for elbow flexion. There is another uh, muscle in your forearm called the brachioradialis. It attaches at the radius and in the brachium, your arm. And so it's the little forearm muscle that pops up uh, if you see people like, you know, flexing their muscles. But that muscle is a synergist. It helps with flexion uh, of the elbow. So the, the biceps brachii does most of the work, but the brachioradialis muscle at the top of your forearm, it helps out with that. Uh, so synergists, again, they can sort of aid the action of prime movers and help stabilize joints. Uh, another example are muscles in your forearm. So you have forearm muscles that extend up into your hand, but these muscles in your forearm that extend up in your hand can help hold your wrist steady while you move your fingers. So by being able to do that, we can stabilize the wrist and move the fingers and it gives us a lot more dexterity. All right, well, that ends uh, our introduction to the muscles and sort of how they behave. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much.